and welcome to our worship today. We've come to the Feast of Pentecost and our readings reflect the giving of the Holy Spirit, not just to those first disciples um, and to their mission and the, the start of the church, but also, of course, to us in our day and in our place and our time. So we're going to be reflecting on what it means to live in the Holy Spirit later on. Let's begin then with our opening responses. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and clothe us with power from on high. Alleluia. Blessed are you, Creator God, to you be praise and glory for ever. As your Spirit moved over the face of the waters, bringing light and life to your creation, pour out your Spirit on us today, that we may walk as children of light, and by your grace reveal your presence. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Our first hymn then fits in with our theme of Pentecost, Come Down, O Love Divine, uh, written by Bianca di Siena, um, a carpenter from Siena in Italy, uh, back in the uh, 1400s, uh, translated by Richard Littledale. Uh, the tune, of course, is Down Ampney. Um, we sung this, I think, only a couple of weeks ago, didn't we? Uh, Down Ampney, ri uh, written, of course, by Ray Fawn Williams. Come down, O love divine, seek thou this soul of mine. first reading today then comes from the book of Acts. The first reading comes from the book of Acts chapter 2, reading from verse 1 to 21. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues, as of fire, appeared among them, 
and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and the residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was, suppo- what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my Spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the earth above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second hymn before the Gospel, Gracious Spirit, Holy Ghost, uh, words by Bishop Christopher Wordsworth, who wrote quite a number of tunes, uh, of hymns in Victorian times. Uh, The tune is Charity by John Stainer, of course. Um, Gracious Spirit, Holy Ghost, taught by thee we covet most of thy gifts at Pentecost, holy heavenly love.
our gospel acclamation. Alleluia, alleluia, come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful people and kindle in them the fire of your love. Alleluia. And so to our gospel reading from St John. The Holy Gospel is taken from John, chapter 15, beginning at verse 26. Jesus spoke to his disciples. When the Advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth who comes from the Father, he will testify on my behalf. You also are to testify because you have been with me from the beginning. I have said these things to you so that when their hour comes, you may remember that I told you about them. I did not say these things to you from the beginning because I was with you. But now I'm going to him who sent me. Yet none of you ask me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your hearts. Nevertheless, <clears throat> I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will prove the world wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. About sin, because they do not believe in me. About righteousness, because I am going to the Father and you will see me no longer. About judgment, because the ruler of this world has been condemned. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of Truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears. And he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason, I said, he will take what is mine and declare it to you. Pentecost, as I have said, marks the beginning of the church, the birth of the church. And we've had um, 40 days of Jesus being with us in his resurrected form since Easter Day. Those stories of eating by the beach and appearing in the upper room and blessing the disciples and saying, peace be with you, all of those things. And then that moment of ascension day of Jesus being lifted up into the heights of heaven to fill the universe and, and all of that. And then we have that 10 days of transition time of waiting. And here today is Pentecost, the feast of the Holy Spirit, that moment in which those disciples are changed and transformed into, not into supermen <laughs> or, or superwomen, that would be a bit daft, but into people who have a mission and a ministry to something bigger than themselves. They're gathered in that room and suddenly the spirit comes upon them, rushing winds, tongues of fire, and those who are gathered in Jerusalem suddenly hear them speaking in all those different languages. Some of them are um, from kind of local, some of them are from further afield in the Roman Empire, and we have that long list of places, don't we? Um, Parthians, Medes, Edomites, Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Phryg Phrygia and Pamphylia. Where are Phrygia and Pamphylia for crying out loud? Who knows where they are now? Egypt, we know. Libya, we know. Crete, we know. Yeah, there are all these people and the whole idea of why Luke records all of this is that it's a recognition that Christianity, this new faith, this new followers of the way of Jesus is not about a particular group of people. It's not about a particular culture. It's not about a particular time or a particular place. It's about a religion that is to reach to the world. And these people who hear the gospel preached in their native language, in a language they understand, suddenly are faced with those questions about 
God? Does God exist? And who is God? And who is Jesus? And how's the power of the Holy Spirit working? And that's a really interesting part, isn't it? And Peter stands up to these to the people and explains what's going on i mean they've been accused of being drunk it's you know it's only uh, nine o'clock in the morning says peter you you've accusing us of being drunk on new wine it's only nine in the morning we you know if we were if we'd been drunk the night before we'd be nursing our hangovers now absolutely but it's about that sense of there is something different happening and people not quite sure what to make of it so Jesus goes back to the prophet Joel. Now, Joel doesn't get much, um, much read in the church, it has to be said. I think, I think he appears um, perhaps for a reading for Ash Wednesday. <laughs> but Joel is a prophet who, who likes his apocalyptic stuff. He likes his end of the world stuff. But Peter knows that. Peter knows that Joel is, is a good prophet for that sort of thing and picks up on those images of the universality of the church. That that the, the spirit works not just with a particular group of people and um, you know i will pour out my spirit upon all flesh upon everybody upon your sons and daughters they shall prophesy sons and daughters you know there are very few female prophets in you know one or two in the, buried away in the old testament they're mostly male but here is jesus is god saying no it's everybody yeah. Your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams. Upon even slaves, both men and women, I shall pour out my spirit and they shall prophesy. That This goes across cultures. This goes across um, class lines. This goes across languages. That the Holy Spirit empowers and uplifts the people of God. Now, you know, sometimes being a staid Anglican, <laughs> we get kind of a, a few comments about, well, where's the, where is the Holy Spirit? Um, and you can go to various churches and experience it, both within the Anglican tradition and further afield. And, and I do occasionally go to spirit-filled churches and I quite enjoy it every once in a while, but it's not for me every week. I quite like the more formal church and the more formal prayers, the more formal uh, Eucharist and all of those kind of things. They're, they're very, they're where, where I am. But that's not to say that I haven't benefited from the power of the Spirit. One of my spiritual experiences was when I went to um, Hillfield, which is the um, Franciscan uh, monastic retreat place near Yeovil in Somerset. And I went, this is a few years ago uh, before I was ordained, and I went there for a few days to, to just be with them and, and, and pray and worship with them and stay with them. And then one day I was just out for a walk around the, um, around the area um, and I was filled with the Holy Spirit. I just, it was a, a remarkable experience. I'd never felt anything like it uh, since or before. It was a, an uplifting experience that changed who I was, that kind of shifted my understanding of who I was. And that experience of the Spirit has stood me in good stead for, for many years, but it's not something that appears every week or every month or even every year. But just sometimes you feel that the presence of God is with you as a faint echo of it, as it was with those disciples on that Pentecost, that original Pentecost, all those years ago, 2000, or nearly 2000 years ago. And part of our mission, if you like, part of our ministry as God's people is to continue to grow in that faith and to experience the spirit, whether it is in the quiet of just sat in a, a church with a single candle lit praying, whether it's on top of a mountain or a hill, whether it's in a kind of community experience or whatever. And that spirit encourages us to grow and to proclaim our faith. Because that's what John is talking about in his gospel. And we're back, I hate to say it again, but we're back with the discourses around the uh, table on that Maundy Thursday night. <laughs> what we seem to have talked about is, is John, those, those three in a bit chapters of John, the last three or four weeks or so, haven't we? Here is Jesus again, preparing his disciples for what is to come. They're going to lose Jesus in that sense. 
and our hearts are sad. But, says Jesus, I've got to go because otherwise the Holy Spirit won't come. If I just hang around, everyone will believe because I'm here. But you need faith to believe, don't you? And so Jesus says, look out for the advocates, look out for the Holy Spirit. It's an important part of your spiritual life, the power that is given. And it encourages you to think and pray and worship and read the Bible and do all of those other things. And encourage you to grow in the faith. And that's something we've all got to do, haven't we? We've all got to find ways in which we continue to grow in the faith. Perhaps it's, you know, being part of a Christian community like the church. Perhaps it's being part of a study group. Perhaps it's being like being part of an um, eco-church or something like that. That the Holy Spirit works with us and through us to reveal God's kingdom. A kingdom that is not limited to a particular people or a particular place or a particular time, but is universal. So from Pentecost, from this feast day then, we're asked to renew, in a way, our spirit of following Jesus. That the Holy Spirit will encourage us to walk more closely with Jesus day by day. That we continue to grow in our faith. Whether it's through uh, study courses or, or, or Bible study or whatever it is. That actually we can develop our faith. Develop our spiritual depths and resources. Come into contact with the power of God in those strange moments of transition, of, 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 uh, uh, of liminality, it's called, isn't it? That between, between places where God is, between this world and the next, that kind of heart, you know, really interesting but difficult place to reach. But you know when you're there, you have that experience of God. It brings us to proclaim the good news in what we do day by day week by week year by year wherever god has placed us and in doing so we're following on in the footsteps of those first apostles who were blessed by the spirit that might not give us great ability to speak in different languages but what it does give us is that ability to serve to witness to proclaim that jesus christ is lord amen our affirmation of faith. Do you believe and trust in God the Father? I believe in God the Father, almighty creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe and trust in his Son, Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe and trust in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our third hymn today then is um, written by Christopher Idle. It's called Lord Jesus Christ Invited Guest. Um, it fits to the well-known folk tune Blow the Wind Southerly um, and it has a little refrain, spirit of holiness, wisdom and faithfulness, wind of the Lord blowing strongly and free, strength of our serving and joy of our worshipping, spirit of God bring your fullness to me.
response to our prayers today is, Lord, come to bless us, fill us with your spirit. And picks up again on this theme of Pentecost as we celebrate today. Of course, there's lots of different places that need the spirit of peace, aren't there? Um, as we speak today, um, as I record this, then the ceasefire between Israel and Hamas seems to be holding, but quite tenuously, I'm sure. And there are places that need the peace of the Holy Spirit. There are places that need the light of the Holy Spirit. I'm sure there are places in our communities and our lives where the Holy Spirit needs to burn brightly. So we pray for our world and ourselves, our church, our families, our friends. We pray for God to fill us with his spirit. Lord, come to bless us, fill us with your spirit. Generous God, we thank you for the power of your Holy Spirit. We ask that we may be strengthened to serve you better. Pray especially as we come out of COVID-19, that we may renew our community. We may be instrumental in rebuilding that community and through the power of the Spirit, show the witness and worth of God. Lord, come to bless us, fill us with your Spirit. We thank you for the wisdom of your Holy Spirit. We ask, to make, ask you to make us wise to understand your will. We pray that we may respond to the promptings of the Spirit, whether it's to speak about our faith, to do acts of service, to witness to the church. Lord, come to bless us, fill us with your Spirit. We thank you for the peace of your Holy Spirit. We ask you to keep us confident of your love wherever you call us. As we serve the community, sometimes it can seem like a thankless task. We never know what seeds we are sowing that others may reap. Keep us faithful to our calling. Lord, come to bless us, fill us with your spirit. We thank you for the healing of your Holy Spirit. We ask you to bring reconciliation and wholeness where there is division, sickness and sorrow. We pray for the healing of the world, for a setting aside of our petty squabbles, that we may look to build a fairer and more just world, one that looks after your creation. Pray too for those in our own families and neighbourhoods who've asked for our prayers, those in hospital, those at home, the lost, the lonely, we pray that we, as a community, as a Christian people, may reach out and visit and support and uphold. Pray too for all those who grieve, that even in their darkness, the light of Christ may shine through the power of the Spirit. Lord, come to bless us, fill us with your Spirit. We thank you for the gifts of your Holy Spirit. We ask you to equip us for the work which you have given us. That we may be a people not afraid to proclaim our faith and willing to guide and lead others to see Jesus Christ as Lord and Saviour. Lord, come to bless us, fill us with your Spirit. We thank you for the fruit of the Spirit. We ask you to reveal in our lives the love of Jesus. Wherever we are, whatever situation we find, may we respond to that place, that time, that situation, as Jesus would. Lord, come to bless us. Fill us with your Spirit. We thank you for the breath of your Holy Spirit, given by the risen Lord, we ask you to keep the whole church living and departed in the joy of eternal life. Praying especially for those who we love but see no longer. And looking to that time when we will be reunited with them. Lord, come to bless us, fill us with your spirit. 
Gracious God, you sent your Holy Spirit upon your Messiah at the River Jordan and upon the disciples in the upper room. In your mercy, fill us with your Spirit. Hear our prayer and make us one in heart and mind to serve you with joy forever. Amen. And to our collect for this Feast of Pentecost, Holy Spirit sent by the Father, ignite in us your holy fire. Strengthen your children with the gift of faith. Revive your church with the breath of love and renew the face of the earth through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Being made one by the power of the Spirit, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And so we come to the peace. God has made us one in Christ. He has set his seal upon us and as a pledge of what is to come, has given the Spirit to dwell in our hearts. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace be with you and all those in your household today. So to our closing hymn our, for of our worship today, we come to Breathe on the Breath of God. Words by Edwin Hatch and tune, the tune is Carlisle by Charles Lockhart. Lockhart. Breathe on me, breath of God, fill me with life anew, that I may love the way you love and do what you would do. so to our closing blessing the spirit of truth lead you into all truth give you grace to confess that jesus christ is lord and strengthen you to proclaim the word and works of god and the blessing of god almighty the father the son and the holy spirit be among you and remain with you always amen Thank you for being with us um, today for our worship for this Feast of Pentecost. Uh, next week, of course, is Trinity Sunday, and um, I look forward to uh, sharing with you then my thoughts on the Trinity, which means I have to go and think some, because it's quite a complicated thing to think about. But do take care, look after yourselves and one another, and we'll see you again soon. Goodbye. Mm -hmm.